Psalm 77, 14 tells us that our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is a God of wonders and miracles. And today's guest is going to share many miracles with us. But we also have to know that uh, our God is out there to protect us and to heal us. You know, he's a God of all kinds of healings, whether it's physical, emotional, whatever. And he's also a God of deliverance and restoration. So our guest today, has he's got a big package going here. He's got a lot to share. So let's welcome Tony. Tony, hey. I was going to say you're from Virginia, <laughs> but you know, I hesitated because I know that's not where you were born and raised, but that's okay. Uh, you drove quite a distance to be here, Tony, and we do appreciate it. And, and you're really on fire for the Lord, and you're so excited what he's done in your life. <laughs> so we're excited to hear what God's done for you. Where would you like to start? Well, um, <laughs> how about when you were about eight years old? When I was eight years old, I saw Jesus. Uh, I had an actual vision of the Lord, and I was in the bathtub, and I just looked, and there's Jesus. And at first I was terrified, and then it was like a peace fell on me. And how did you know it was Jesus? Uh, well, I had seen pictures, but it, he looked close enough that it was like, okay, that's Jesus. <laughs> uh, his figures were more, were, were more uh, Middle Eastern than the pictures I'd seen. The face a, a little bit more um, solid, uh, but it was like, that's Jesus. And it was just like I well, just knew. You must have seen a light around him also. Oh, yes. Because most I mean, people that have seen Jesus have noted the bright light. I, I could see him, and then everything else was just, the whole bathroom was just like lit up. Mm -mm. And um, Did you tell your parents about it? Uh, I told my sister. Uh -huh. And uh, it was like, He's not going to come visit a little naked boy. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it was just being so, children. So what happened after that, Tony? Uh, I, got, I did get on fire for the Lord then. Um, I was able to read real good at a young age. I was reading college level. Oh, my and, goodness. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> but uh, I was, And I was reading the Bible, and, in fact, um, I went to an adult Bible study group at that age. At eight years old? It, it was right around eight, maybe nine. And now that only lasted a few weeks because then they felt like I wasn't mature enough to deal with their topics. And But just the fact that I did attend. Mm, that's um, that's uh, amazing in itself. And then somewhere along the line, I just... Well, everybody started calling me preacher because I did tell my friends about it, um, kind of like the Joseph thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really mean to, you know, act like I'm something, but I was excited. Mm -hmm. It was like, i seen Jesus. Mm -hmm. And um, I just kind of, after a lot of the ridicule, I just kind of shoved it. I just pushed it in the background yeah mm -hmm. and then when we when when I entered junior high I really started uh, to get wild uh, and what age was that about 12 12 ish yeah mm -hmm. I would say so and before then before then I would go off on my own a lot mm -hmm. I always hung around older people um, I had already started drinking and smoking at a young, young age, and my, my parents uh, never knew it. But my dad wasn't a big drinker, but there would be like Miller Genuine Draft in the refrigerator, and I'd pop it open, I'd mark where it was at, and then just estimate, okay, he won't notice this much gone. Oh. And 
he uh, he had a bypass, double bypass, I believe, and so he had some uh, cold duck wine, and I'd do the same thing with that. But since it was a bigger bottle, I could get more. I wonder why you felt you needed to drink at that age. I mean, from what you're saying, you was kind of a loner. Mm -hmm. It's not that you were with a group of boys that were pressuring you. Right. Uh, Do you have any idea why that happened? I really don't know. Um, I think it was the devil trying to pull you into onto his side. Um, early. I, I'm assuming you weren't going to church much. Uh, I really, I when when I didn't, I really backed off from it. I mm -hmm. mean, did I'd, your parents continue to go? Oh yes, my my parents are very very outstanding mm -hmm. believers. Mm -hmm. um, but the, they just allowed you to stay home then? You didn't have to go anymore? I think I hid a lot. Oh. I, <laughs> now, my memory is not real good. Um, but, well, that's okay. I just was wondering. But I, I hid a lot. <laughs> okay. There were war, woods close to the house and stuff. And, um, you know, if I can't go if you can't be found. Mm -hmm. So. Right. <laughs> wow. Well, um, all right. So you started drinking and smoking and then you must have gotten involved with some friends is that right oh yeah and um well i had two friends die uh in junior high school uh one of them the day he died me and him had gotten in a physical altercation and and that <clears throat> I never had a chance to make up for that. And, um, but the Lord knows your heart, don't he? He knew your intentions. But I think, you know, that and he, he died in a violent auto wreck. Mm. Um, and he was decapitated. Oh, my. And so I think that really is what started me to look away from God. Okay, so you were probably questioning why God allowed that to happen. Yes, and uh, I think I just started, well, there may not be a God because of this, you know. And then the music I started listening to, oh. uh, heavy metal, some of the real... Um, some of the demonic, more, demonic yeah, music. Yeah. Oh yeah. That that has a big influence on young people. Huge. And I want to mention right now that you need to you need to know what your teenager is listening to. And a lot of times they start listening to it a lot earlier than thirteen. It can be as you were nine or ten or even eight, whatever. And the music has a demonic power to it. It's got which, a pull. Yes. Yeah, pull, right, which it will brainwash, so to speak, your child, and they can get in some very depressive, um, suicidal. That's one of the heavy things. And I know a family, a very nice family, that had four boys and one boy ended up committing suicide. His mother, well, she was a stepmother. His, his uh, biological mother had passed away, and the dad had remarried a beautiful, wonderful woman. Very, very religious, let's put it that way. She wasn't what we would call a strong Bible reading person, but she had strong morals, and she had a lot of strength, very uh, good, person in the world, let's put it that way. Now, that doesn't always count with the Lord, and she did, but she did believe that Jesus Christ had gone to the cross, and she believed that his shed blood was very powerful and could heal and also, of course, forgive sins. But she never really got deeply involved with the Word. She was very concerned about that boy. He went into the uh, service when he was about 18. He was a little slow in school. At 18, that's when he committed suicide. He hung himself. 
she said he was always listening to heavy metal and she mm. was very she didn't like it she tried to get it away from him and stop him and because he considered her a stepmother he didn't really give her the respect due her and he went about doing his own thing so to speak but, but the warning is and and you're just confirming that that you need to know what your children are listening to absolutely absolutely uh, the music really controls your emotions. You don't control your emotions. And the angrier the music is, the angrier you get. It's Parents a spiritual. Don't. See, yes. it's a spirit. Yes. It's a spirit that comes upon you, and you open the door to that spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why that happens. Yeah. If you don't open the door, it can't consume you. Right. But if you open the door, and the, the wider that opening gets, the more you're going to be vulnerable to that spirit. Yes. And that spirit's going to start controlling your thinking. Yes, mm -hmm. ab absolutely. Well, Tony, um, we're going to have to move along. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get very far, did we? <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, you, you got involved with some friends, and what happened there? Um. How old? What, let's... let's Let's say, uh, let me ask you, when you were about, say, 16, 17, where were you at? Uh, right around that age, right around that time period, uh, I had done left home. Okay. Um, now, I, st I, I remember where you left off. Now, you had left off saying that your friend had been killed in an auto mm -hmm. accident, and you were starting to question if God existed. Right. And then, uh, I don't know exactly what happened to you between that time and when you were uh, when you left home when you were 16 or 17 that time is really a blank to me okay that's um, why we skipped it see I, yeah. I that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, while you were talking about suicide mm -hmm. and I just remembered this honestly I did try to commit suicide um, but, but I just remembered it, and I really don't remember a lot about it, mm -hmm. but I did. And when you were a teenager? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got so aggressive, so mean, uh, I think I completely tossed God away. I think I was angry. I, th I think that I could not withhold the standards that I felt I had to. And so, since I can't with, uh, hold up to the standards of normal people, I wasn't going to mess with it. And then I got more involved with drinking. I got more involved with smoking. Uh, I met weed <laughs> and started smoking joints. And I just got into somewhat of the drug crowd. And I experimented with some of the harder drugs, but did, the harder drugs did nothing for me. Um, there were times where I I did snort. There's one time where a lady just uh, stuck her finger up to my nose, said breathe, and I breathed, and it was coke. Mm -hmm. But it did absolutely nothing for me. That was the Lord. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> The Lord kept me away from that. Yes. Um, I could have easily been hooked on that mess. Yes. Um, but I got into the weed. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for a while, I lived with a, dr a drug dealer. And um, it wasn't a real long period. I think maybe like six months. Mm -hmm. And then I went into the military. Um, and, of course, the military... Drinking, and a lot, a lot of weed, even in the military, and so I, that was my lifestyle. And my lifestyle was one of anger. I didn't want to talk about Jesus. I mean, I went from feeling called into the ministry at a young age to being completely against God um, fairly quickly, uh, and. Would you call yourself an atheist at that point? Yes, especially when I was in the military. Um, I didn't. I, I at least 
And now looking back, I don't, I don't believe I ever actually gave up on God. I still wanted him. Mm-hmm. But I just had so many barriers up that I was not going to admit to it. Well, that happens with a lot of people. Uh, I think some of it is fear, disappointment. They just don't want to be disappointed again. It's a protection, a way of mm-hmm. protecting our emotions and our heart. And that's what you were experiencing. And, and then you look for something, you can't find it. So you get more frustrated. And mm-hmm. that's what was happening with you. Now in the service, would you say that you met other Christians or atheists? Briefly, what happened there? Oh, uh, I've, most, most people I hung around with were not practicing Christians. Some may have called themselves Christians, but they wouldn't mention Jesus around me. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> because you were bitter. Oh, very, very yeah. bitter, very aggressive. But you, you had mentioned that even though you had turned your back on the Lord, he was still, and, mm-hmm. but deep down you still wanted him, a relationship. Uh, he still was watching over you because oh, yes. you had a car hit you. What was that all about, Tony? Uh, and this was right after I got out of the military. It was around 95. Mm-hmm. Um, I was walking across the street. It was late at night. And all of a sudden, this car come out of nowhere and was right in front of me. And I honestly do not believe that the car hit me. It should have. All of a sudden, I was in the air, about 15 feet. And when I landed, I landed softly. And there is no way that... I should have landed softly. And I got up. The boy must have thought that he hit me. And maybe injured you badly. Right. He he was was a young man? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, At the time, I was in my 30s. -hmm. And he was white. He's like, are you okay? I mean, I had the long hair. I had a beard down to here. Uh, I wore real extravagant earrings that come down to here. Oh, I'll say that's extravagant. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was called Gypsy Man. Oh. Um, so he was, he was terrified. Mm-hmm. And I got up and I'm like, I'm fine. Well, we need to get the ambulance to the cops. I'm like, don't worry about it. And I walked 15 miles home. Amazing. And an angel, it was an angel of the Lord to snatch me up. Right, yeah. I mean. That that does happen with people. God watches and protects us, and we do have guardian angels. A lot of people probably don't believe that, but we really do, and they do watch over us. Of course, we don't always, maybe sometimes there is some injury, but it depends on the person and their mm-hmm. relationship with the Lord. And sometimes it's just the Lord in his grace and goodness and love for us, even though we've turned our back on him, he's still watching over us because he does have a plan for us. And he knows better than we do what that plan <laughs> is. So he kind of wants us to hang around so that plan yeah. can manifest itself. Uh, we haven't even gotten into the part of your illness. We're going to brief that and probably continue it on another program. Let's see what happens. Tell us about your experiences with the illness, how it began and how you felt and where you were at at that point. Well, looking backwards, it started around 2006 with my stomach. I would go weeks without even thinking about eating. I just, I was not getting hungry. Um, Were you still drinking at that point? Is that maybe why, part of it? At that point, I was going through college online, um, trying 
try and get myself straight. Mm -hmm. um, I still hadn't turned to the Lord, but I, I had met now my wife. You met her online? Online, and uh, also we talked on the phone too. And I was softening up. And I wasn't as angry. And so I was going through school and I would just forget to eat. And that's where, looking back, we can see that it started. And then we became friends. And then we decided that I would move. And I moved from Alabama to Virginia uh, to be with her. And then that's when I, wrote, I, was, I started having back pain. I was a welder. And my back started becoming extrusionally painful. So I had back problems. Uh, the, this deterioration, this disease, bulging discs, her herniated discs, my back turned out to be a mess. Had you gone to the doctor at that point? No, I didn't go to the doctor until May 2009. So that was after you had those symptoms for quite a long time. Right. And um, What did you think they were caused by? Didn't care. Oh. I just, <laughs> uh, when it came to medicine, I didn't want no part of it. Uh, I've had several injuries. I stitched myself together, and um, that was just me. I avoided doctors at all costs. And finally, in 2009, my wife had been trying, trying, trying to get me to go to the doctor. I kept refusing, and her niece finally had a long discussion with me, and I finally agreed to go. And then that's when that mess started. And uh, <clears throat> the symptoms just kept going down and down. I mean, slurring, uh, weakness all over my legs. Tony, we're going to have to stop right here. So I think anyone that's watching this program will, will want to find out what happens. <laughs> so they're going to want to tune in next week when you continue your testimony. And they don't even know what disease it was, so we'll keep them guessing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for being our guest. Let me shake your hand. Uh, you're, uh, as I said, very on fire for the Lord, and, and you can just see the excitement in your, uh, your eyes and your <laughs> spirit. And that's, that's great, because you have a lot more to share on the program. So we'll see you next week, Tony, and thank you for being our guest. Okay, thank you. My name is Darlene, and I am so excited to tell you about the Healing Miracles Anointed Prayer Book. A few years ago, the Holy Spirit told the hostess and co-producer of the Healing Miracles TV program, Joan Abel, to put together a book of prayers. The result was this beautiful anointed prayer book. Not a single prayer became a part of this book until the Holy Spirit gave His approval. There are over 90 prayers and illustrations in this book, covering almost every conceivable subject. The book starts out with prayers of encouragement. Let me remind you of John 14:14, 14, 14, which reads, Whatever you ask in the name of Jesus Christ, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. There are prayers for children, including prayers for teenagers, prayers concerning court cases, much needed prayers on deliverance, including deliverance from generational curses, depression, fear, hopelessness, ungodly habits, intercessory prayer for our loved ones, who may be addicted to drugs, alcohol, or involved in other ungodly activities. Breaking soul ties. Should a Christian be a Mason? How to pray for our nation and our military. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, 
and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The second book of Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. Prayers on finances and prosperity, including prayers for employment, for God's favor and knowing God's will. A chapter on health and healing. Psalm 118. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Marriage prayers, intercessory prayers for your spouse. Prayers on renewing the mind, watching what you say. Words are powerful and they can determine your future. It's conquering your thought life, overcoming worry and stress. So, let go and let God. The Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, intercessory prayers of salvation. We can intercede for our friends and our family by praying these powerful prayers for their salvation. All the prayers in this book are very, very powerful. And remember, this book was inspired by the Holy Spirit. The book ends with an illustration of how much God our Father, Yeshua, loves us. And if you need a miracle, you need to be praying these prayers. For a love gift, this wonderful anointed prayer book can be yours. Thank you. And remember, our God is a God of healing miracles. once again for joining us on Healing Miracles. And we have our miracle person with us again today, Tony. Welcome, Tony, to Healing Miracles. Hey. And we want to just share a little scripture before we start, because all our hope and our promises and our blessings, all, all our miracles come from the Word of God, because He tells us to read His Word, study His Word, and meditate on His Word, and absorb it into our spirit and our heart and keep it there. And it is our, it's just our answer to everything. So you, you receive some wonderful blessings uh, and answers from the Lord. Uh, Psalm 32, it's uh, verse two, uh, chapter 30. It says, O Lord, my God, I cried out to you for help and you restored my health. And there's so many people, you need to, we're gonna put that scripture on the screen and you need to copy that down and you need to read it every day. And then uh, also, this is a favorite of a lot of people and mine as well, Isaiah 41.10, where it says, don't be afraid for I am with you. God is always with you whether you feel his presence or not. He's with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. There's that word help again. And I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That is, that is such a wonderful comfort 
If you haven't asked Jesus into your heart, you need to do that. You need to do it right now. Let's bow our head right now, Tony. The Heavenly Father, I come, to, I come before you right now in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, I know, I know that there's more for me. And I know that Jesus Christ is the answer. And I know he is for me. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that I can receive healing, blessings, restoration and deliverance, and salvation, that's a big one, through your Son, Jesus Christ. And right now, I invite Jesus Christ into my heart, into my life. And Father, I thank you and I ask forgiveness for all my, my shortcomings and all my sins. And I receive Jesus and I know that you are touching me right now and I thank you again. Now I go forth as a new creation in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Father. Now if you said that prayer, uh, we, we would like to hear from you and we'll have a telephone number on the screen and you can call us and we will be happy to not only pray with you more if you have more problems or concerns or prayer needs, we'll be happy to pray with you. Back to Tony. <laughs> we know we have a little problem talking, don't we, Tony? <laughs> Tony and I have been talking. He came in last night because he's from Virginia and uh, we, we've had a real challenge trying to get the floor. <laughs> but anyway, um, so Tony, tell us, when we left off the last program, you had just been to the doctor and he had diagnosed you with something that you had been dealing with for a long time and were too stubborn to go to the doctor for. What did that doctor tell you? Uh, that it, uh, she made a provisional diagnosis of what's called ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. And um, that's a pretty tough one. Yeah. That, uh, that's a hard disease. And any disease is hard, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want any of them. <laughs> and I just started going to church. Um, After she diagnosed you? Uh, uh, before. Before. Yeah. And, and w now, you were uh, an atheist. How, what, what made you go to church? My wife. Well, she oh, didn't make me. She's your girlfriend at um, that time? <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh -huh. um, I saw the way she was. She had an unnatural love to all people. And I had started to change through, uh, through working through college and stuff. It got me to start using my, my brain again. And, but I saw the way she acted to people and it just nicked away at my heart. And um, we disagree, who mentioned going to church? Before I moved down to Virginia, up to Virginia, um, I had told her I didn't want to see a Bible. I, we don't even mention church to me. And then about two to three months later, one of us mentioned church. I think it was me. She thinks it was her. <laughs> and she found a church. And I warned her. I said that I was not dressing up. I was going as I normally would. And... Uh, I told her somebody looked cross-eyed at me, I'd hit him. Mm -hmm. And I still had a little bit of aggressive tendency <laughs> in me. And I said, I'd hit him, and then I'd walk out. And uh, I walked in, the first f fella that I saw uh, looked like a normal person, mm -hmm. was dressed casual, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay. And then I sat through the church service, and then my health was going down, so we didn't go every Sunday, but we went as my health allowed. And so, I mean, <laughs> it was eye-opening. My adult life, I hadn't been in a church, and so it, it, it was I, something just, it was like, okay. So you were, you were receiving. I was receiving. Um, I still haven't read the Bible yet, but um, I was receiving. That's wonderful. 
And the Lord had been waiting a long time for you to come back. <laughs> How many years was it, Tony? <laughs> well, at this time, I was approximately 43. Uh huh. Uh, and you walked away when you were about 12, right? Yeah, that's a pretty long time. So. <laughs> was that 30 years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, you know, not wanting to hear anything about him. And then all of a sudden, the Lord put somebody in my life. And so I, what happened next, Tony? Well, um, what happened with the disease? I got worse and worse real quick. Well, what was happening though with your, uh, your body? My legs were went real quick. I used a cane for a short period. Then I had to use a walker. That was a short period. By 2010, I was in a wheelchair, and my legs couldn't use them at all. My fingers, one hand went like this, and then the other hand did within months. You mean they just curled up? Curled up. Couldn't and you couldn't use pry them. them loose? No. Well, they would. I could go like this mm -hmm. and move them. They were still pliable that way, but I, then they just hung there, mm -hmm. and then they'd go back. And so they were worthless. So Lou Gehrig's disease is actually mostly a disease of muscles? Is that what it is? or? The that nervous is, the nervous system is destroyed. Oh, the nervous system. And now system. they changed it later with me. Mm -hmm. uh, we went we went from going to the VA to going to a civilian neurologist, and that neurologist said it was unknown because my stomach became paralyzed. I couldn't eat, and uh, there were just a lot of things that were not that were above what normally happens with Lou Gehrig's mm. and so he changed it to unknown I see um, but I could I had trouble talking my my words were slurred I had a headache all the time severe headache and uh, I had problems breathing swallowing I choked on plenty of food uh, in fact, when I was healed, I hadn't eaten for six to eight months. I had had no solid food. Um, the only nutrient I had was that generic Ensure, which I would sip all day long, just enough to make my mouth wet. And I was getting like 100, 150 calories a day was all. Oh my goodness. You must have been skin and bone. Mm, yes. I mean, you're very thin now. <laughs> yes. And I eat like a horse now. <laughs> oh, well, that's good that you can maintain your weight like that. Okay, so you were in rough shape, and your diagnosis was very poor. But you, at this point, had still not made a commitment to the Lord or believed that he could heal you. Where were you at with that, Tony? Uh, it would have been... It would have been uh, at at the next doctor's appointment that, well, actually it was at the doctor's appointment to where the doctor uh, made the provisional diagnosis of Lou Gehrig's. Mm -hmm. And um, I turned around and I told her the Lord was going to heal me. Unknown to my wife, I had accepted the Lord December 2010. Oh. Uh, we we did not have altar calls at the church. I never even knew what, what to do publicly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just saw it on TV one time, and I said, okay, I'll accept the Lord. And then I made up a Tony way of just saying, Lord, come into my life. And so then I was brand new. Um, then when I saw the doctor, and the doctor brought in, Social, the social services people and, and talking to my wife about putting me in a nursing home and I told her that the Lord was going to heal me and um, it took a year and a half later but he did. <laughs> you just knew that in your spirit he was going to heal you. Yeah, the words just came out yeah. and I, was, I had not planned on saying, you know. Um, Were you, had you studied the Bible at all at this point? Were you reading the Bible at all? At, at that point, not much. A little bit online mm -hmm. from what people 
would, would write mm -hmm. um, some scriptures, but as far as sitting down reading it, no. I was still totally naive. Did you watch any Christian television? I was, I was basically watching the stuff I was watching before, the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, science fiction stuff, gory stuff. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. God really loves you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Not very he Christian very, stuff. He was very patient with you, and that's that's good to know that God never gives up on us. He never he did not with me. I mean, I hadn't renewed my mind. I believed and accepted Jesus, mm -hmm. but I hadn't progressed past mm -hmm. that point. So, when did the healing begin, and how did it happen? And, and there was a point also about two weeks before your healing that you did get very depressed and you just wanted to end your life. What did you do? I was on an emotional roller coaster this whole time. Mm -hmm. um, my wife was the prayer warrior and uh, she, she did not believe I was going to die. And she said, the Holy Spirit told me you're not dying from this. Well, two weeks before, I ran my wheelchair into traffic. We had a four-lane highway, and I was trying to get a car to hit me, so that would end my wife's stress and my stress. I just wanted it to be over. The car swerved. This wheelchair was three, weighed 350 pounds, and it moved slow, and so the cars had plenty of time to swerve. I stayed out there 30 or 40 minutes. Out in the traffic? Yeah, kept trying to get him to hit me. <laughs> and um, Oh my goodness. You know, this is you country. You scared a lot of people <laughs> out of their wits. Yes, and I apologize to anybody that was there. And if they <laughs> oh see this program, I do apologize. <laughs> um, a week before my healing, my speech and swallowing therapist was pulling up our driveway and swore that he saw me walking. But you weren't. But I wasn't. Mm. In fact, I had gone even more downhill than what I already was. And well, sometimes uh, it's darkest before the dawn. Exactly. Mm -hmm. when, things, when things are the darkest, when there's no way out, that's when the Lord swoops in. That's so true. And uh, then July 4, 2012, uh, Help me out, Lord. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's when you were in the parking lot and you started walking. You got out of your wheelchair. Uh, you've got the video that that was actually about an hour after I was originally started walking. But where I, did you start walking? I was in my living room. Oh, okay. Oh, and you talked to your legs. Yeah. And you, you told your legs to move. Well, what happened first was I saw a vision of Jesus being crucified. It was like I was there. Okay. And I saw him being hung and God putting all his wrath on Jesus. And then after that, that's where I was knocking my hands together and saying, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. Why? I don't know. Can't explain. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then I said, pain be gone. I had back problems, so I was in excruciating pain. And I said that three times. Just Jesus pain always. Be gone. Jesus said a lot of things three times, yeah, which I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I said it three times, and then I said in the name of Jesus three mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And then I guess I moved or something, and it was like, wait a minute, there ain't no pain. Mm -hmm. And I was moving around, and there was no pain. And so then I seen it. I did with my fingers. My fingers started to move. I showed my wife. Then I came back out to the living room, and that's when my legs hit the floor. I said, Jesus, don't let me fall. And I tried to stand up, and I did. And stand up now. Let's see what you... Watch your microphone that? now. <laughs> that's great. And uh, I stood up, started walking, went to the bedroom, showed my wife, and... We were in a celebration, and then that's when 
um, we decided we was going to go to the worship service they were having, which we did not have any way for me to travel. And so uh, we weren't, hadn't planned on going. And then That was at like, night? Was that uh, a night yeah, service? Uh, uh -huh. It was about 4 o'clock. Okay. And so the party was on, praise the Lord. And I'll bet everybody was so excited for you. <laughs> I bet they stood up and clapped. I gave my testimony uh -huh. to that night of what happened. Praise the and, Lord. Uh, you know, the Lord has just been so good even when I wasn't. <laughs> yes. And, that's, uh, that's because he's a wonderful, loving God. And as I said before, he never leaves us or forsakes us. That's his word. Uh, Tony, we've got a couple minutes left. What are you doing now? I pray for people every chance I get, Jim. All right. Um, a few weeks ago, a 12-year-old boy that had never walked, the Lord he, healed him. He walked the, the length of the living room. I haven't been able to talk to him, so I don't know exactly how he is now. Um, Why was he not able to walk? What was his problem? Uh, his mother had been in a car accident while she was oh, carrying him. Oh, oh. And he had scar tissue. And when I went to pray for him, the Lord told me that he had scar tissue, which is what was keeping him from walking. So he had never walked? He had never walked. And how and, old was he? Uh, 12 years old. Oh, how exciting for and him. And he got up and he walked. Oh. I can tell you story after story, Joan. The Lord wants to heal. And if I can, Luke chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. Jesus tells us it's his will. He wants us healed. It's when the leper approached him and said, Lord, if thou will, you can heal me. And the answer applies today. It is I will. People ask God, they pray to God saying, God, is it your will that I be healed? It's already answered. Look it up. Luke 5, verses 12 and 13, it is his will for you to be healed. And I want you to talk to someone. Somebody out there needs a little more convincing. <laughs> <laughs> you just tell them whatever the Holy Spirit speaks through you right now. We've got a couple minutes left for you to do that. First, I pray that the Lord does show you he wants you healed. He wants you healed more than you want healed. All we have to do is trust Him. Uh, there, there's some somebody in a blue shirt right now in a wheelchair that is listening. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk now. Just get up and walk. I pray for all the sick out there, anyone that needs healing. Father, reach out and touch them. Release healing onto them in the name of Jesus. Lou Gehrig's disease, especially, I bind you up. You get out. You release that person. Be completely healed in Jesus' mighty name. When we mention the name of Jesus, Joan, and you know this, the demons flee. Flee. Right. Huge. And I want to read real quick. We, um, Luke 4, uh, 4.18, where it talks about eyes, because there's someone oh, yes. out there that has eye problems. And it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, that's what you're doing, and recovery of sight to the blind. And someone out there needs to accept this scripture right now because you have, you have the healing power that we're talking about that, that we, can, we can just call upon and know that you are already healed through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank you, Tony. God bless you. Thank you. My name is Tiffany. Healing Miracles Ministry would like to thank you for watching the program 
and for all of you who have faithfully prayed and given financial support to the ministry. Our gift this month for a donation of $10 or more is the book Prophecy to the Land by Les Lawrence. This book explains the time prophecy regarding Middle East and Israel. Today, the Bible prophecy is unfolding before our very eyes. We also ask that you consider becoming a monthly partner. Any amount is welcome. Shalom. My name is Darlene, and I am so excited to tell you about the Healing Miracles Anointed Prayer Book. A few years ago, the Holy Spirit told the hostess and co-producer of the Healing Miracles TV program, Joan Abel, to put together a book of prayers. The result was this beautiful anointed prayer book. Not a single prayer became a part of this book until the Holy Spirit gave His approval. There are over 90 prayers and illustrations in this book, covering almost every conceivable subject. The book starts out with prayers of encouragement. Let me remind you of John 14:14, 14, 14, which reads, Whatever you ask in the name of Jesus Christ, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. There are prayers for children, including prayers for teenagers, prayers concerning court cases, much-needed prayers on deliverance, including deliverance from generational curses, depression, fear, hopelessness, ungodly habits, intercessory prayer for our loved ones who may be addicted to drugs, alcohol, or involved in other ungodly activities, breaking soul ties, should a Christian be a Mason, how to pray for our nation and our military. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The second book of Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. Prayers on finances and prosperity, including prayers for employment, for God's favor and knowing God's will. A chapter on health and healing. Psalm 118, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Marriage prayers, intercessory prayers for your spouse. Prayers on renewing the mind, watching what you say. Words are powerful and they can determine your future. It's conquering your thought life, overcoming worry and stress. So, let go and let God. The Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, intercessory prayers of salvation, we can intercede for our friends and our family by praying these powerful prayers for their salvation. All the prayers in this book are very, very powerful. And remember, this book was inspired by the Holy Spirit. The book ends with an illustration of how much God our Father, Yeshua, loves us. And if you need a miracle, you need to be praying these prayers for a love gift, this wonderful anointed prayer book can be yours. Thank you. And remember, our God is a God of healing miracles. Yeah.